I'm Glenn Rawson, and welcome. Standing nearly seven feet tall and weighing close to 300 pounds, mostly muscle, Freeman Nickerson of Perrysburg, New York, was not just large in stature, but also large in spirit. In April 1833, Freeman joined the Latter-day Saints along with his wife, Hulda, and some of his nine children. The fire burned hot for Freeman, and his greatest desire was to share the gospel, starting with his family. Two of his sons, Moses and Freeman, lived in Canada in the area of Mount Pleasant, Ontario. Freeman traveled to Kirtland to meet the prophet Joseph Smith and asked him if he would accompany him to Canada to teach his sons. Joseph agreed to go. October 5th, 1833. Freeman, Joseph, and Sidney Rigdon left for Canada. The mission would last about a month, cover about 500 miles, and result in the conversion of Freeman's two sons, their families, and several others. This was only the beginning of Freeman and Hulda's service. Not long after, Joseph and Parley Pratt passed through on their way east to recruit volunteers for Zion's camp. Not only did the 55-year-old man join Zion's camp, but so too did two of his sons, Uriel and Levi. Freeman was actually given a mission by the prophet to travel further east and raise more men and money for the march. Freeman, older than most any other man in the company, would complete that arduous journey and back. His family remembers the promises of the prophet that their sacrifices were accepted of the Lord and by them they had earned the martyr's crown. Freeman and Hulda moved with the saints from Kirtland to Missouri and from Missouri to Nauvoo, faithful and devoted all the while, mission after mission. Then in Nauvoo, Freeman was called on a mission again to the eastern United States. It was March 1842 in Boston, Massachusetts, when Freeman advertised for a public meeting. Having heard of the persecution of the Mormons in Missouri, Abijah Tewksbury attended that meeting, and due to the magnetizing influence, he said, of Freeman Nickerson, Abijah was converted, and the first branch of the church in Boston was organized. Freeman returned home to Nauvoo and in the spring of 1844 was called out again to preach the gospel and campaign for Joseph Smith for President of the United States. He was on that mission when Joseph was martyred in June 1844. Finally, it was 1846. The saints had fled Nauvoo following Brigham Young to the Rocky Mountains. By late summer, only the poorest remained behind. Freeman's family was provisioned and prepared for the journey, but Freeman was on a mission to the east, his fourth extended mission. They couldn't leave without it. But mobs continually harassed and assaulted those remaining saints in Nauvoo. Finally, in August, Freeman returned, but was so ill, the family couldn't leave. Nauvoo became at that time a city under siege as mobs attacked and drove the saints out. And then, September 28, 1846, the Nickersons had no choice. Sick or not, they loaded their wagon and trudged toward the river. As they passed down Parley Street, they looked back to see the mob ransack their home and then burn it to the ground. That night they would cross the river by the light of a burning city. As the family continued westward, sickness prevailed. Freeman could not regain his strength. He sank lower until finally on a cold January day under a makeshift shelter on the Sheraton River in Iowa, seven feet tall and 70 years old, Freeman Nickerson breathed his last. My friends, if any of you wonder what it means to waste and wear out our lives in the service of the Master, well, this is it.